Hello, everyone. Welcome to OVERT 2020 online conference. My name is Lev, and I want to talk about the upgrade from OVERT 4.3 to our latest and greatest release, OVERT 4.4. So first of all, the numbers here are a bit misleading, because this latest version includes a lot of new features and improvements over the previous version and it feels more like over 5.0 instead of 4.4 actually one of the changes is the move to the new uh, operating system and we actually use centos and rel 8 instead of uh, rel uh, 7 or centos 7 which was used in previous releases so one of the issues we have related to this is that unfortunately there is no in-place upgrade so you can't uh, take an instance which runs centos or rel 7 and simply update it into rel 8 or centos 8 which means you need to reinstall both your hosts and the instance which is used to run your engine so in order to upgrade uh, you need to make sure that you some, uh, have some uh, prerequisites already in place. Uh, first is that you need to update to the over 4.3 before you're updating to 4.4. Uh, this is important because you can't update, for example, from over 4.1 directly to 4.4. You need first to update to 4.3 and only then you'll be able to upgrade to 4.4. The second re prerequisite or requirement is um, you need to make sure that your data center and cluster compatibility level, level is set at least to 4.2. So let's go over the process um, overview. And the main steps you need to take in order to upgrade your uh, installation of over 4.3 to 4.4. So first of all, you need to stop the, your uh, engine service. You then perform a backup of the database. And once you have the backup uh, ready, you can then go to the next step, which will be prepared the, the uh, instance where the new uh, overt engine will be running. It can be either be reinstallation on the same host, if you don't have another one, or you can install a new one, of course, using the new operating system, the CentOS or L8.2. You then perform a restoration of the backup that uh, you previously taken go through the installation there and the last step is basically to replace the hosts in in your environment with the new host based on centos or l8.2 so how we perform the backup we are using the engine backup tool using these parameters so we basically back up everything on the system and this tool packages it all into one backup file. Here is an, an example run. As you can see, we stop the overt engine. Now oh, this is important. So uh, otherwise some, someone could modify your environment while you're performing the backup and then your restored system won't be consistent with uh, something that uh, remained to run. And you're running the engine backup uh, command itself. Now here, the restoration of the engine a database. As you can see, we are using the same uh, engine backup tool, simply providing it with uh, different parameters. And the last step after we perform the restoration, we need to make sure that we run the engine setup tool to actually set up the, env the environment using your previous configuration that it uh, uh, restored from the backup. So now let's 
see some demo of this process. Okay, so as you can see, we are stopping the overtension service. Now, in some cases, in order to be completely safe, you can also disable the service afterwards. And then we are beginning the engine backup process. Now, in this case, uh, for the demo, I'm using a new clean environment, which includes just a small number of hosts and VMs. So the backup runs very, very uh, fast. Now, uh, the backup will uh, obviously depend on the size of your, of your environment. If your env environment is larger, it can, of course, take more time to perform the backup and now we are copying this backup file to a new host which will uh, be used for the installation of the new uh, engine the 4.4 based one as you see we simply copy it with uh, scp And now we perform the restoration using the same tool. Now on this host, we already installed the Overt Engine 4.4. So all the packages are installed. And what's left is basically to perform the restoration of the backup with our 4.3 uh, uh, configuration. As you can see, we are restoring both the engine and the DWH databases. And as you can notice, uh, the restoration normally takes more time than the backup. Okay, let's speed it up a bit. Okay, as you see, it's created the users. And notice after it uh, completes the restoration, it also gives you a notice that, uh, that you should run the engine setup. Now, this step is important, something not to forget. So now, uh, we will run the engine setup. Okay, as you can see, I'm using the defaults now. So it's basically similar to the clean installation.
Okay, let's speed it up a bit. So as you can see, it's very similar to the normal engine setup execution. Starts the services. And we are basically finished with this step. Let's move to the next stage. Okay. So here we are logging into the administration portal to see uh, how our system looks just after the upgrade is performed. As you can see, we still see all the events and messages from um, the previous environment, including the errors that actually were present during the creation of the VMs in the environment that we upgraded. Okay. We also receive an alert with, with uh, we are actually at the compatibility level 4.3, even uh, that the, our system is the 4.4 installation. So let's look at the hosts. As you see, uh, the two hosts that were previously running in 4.3 are available to the system. And also the two VMs that were running are still running despite the upgrade process. And as you can see here, I connected with the remote viewer and the VMs are actually were running through the whole time of the upgrade. So we were not affected by the engine uh, itself being torn down, shut down, and being reinstalled using the new version. Okay, cool. Let's look up next to the next stage. Which, which is how we are adding a new host to the system. Okay. 
So, uh, just right now we have two hosts which are based on RHEL 7 or CentOS 7 in this case. And now we want to add a new host which is based on CentOS 8. Which is uh, basically not different than adding uh, a new host during the normal uh, configuration of the environment. Okay, we receive the normal warnings because in this case I'm using VMs for the uh, demo and they of course don't, don't have the power management options. And the environment begins the installation of the new host. I, can, I think we can speed it up. Okay, now let's uh, look at the cluster level update. So as you can see right now, we are at the cluster compatibility level 4.3. And what we want to do is actually move to the 4.4 level. It gives us the warning. Uh, specifically, uh, talking about the currently running VMs. And in this case, the VMs will continue to run. But after we complete the update, we're expected to manually shut down the VMs one by one in order for them to get the new uh, configuration just as it happens during the normal uh, operations inside the environment. Okay, and as you can see, it actually gives us an error in this case. And this is for the simple reason. We still have in the environment uh, the old hosts, the one which are based on CentOS 7, which basically prevents us to move to the new compatibility version. And as you can see, the error actually provides us with the information about the names of the specific hosts which are not compatible. Okay, and it also provides information to how to resolve this issue. So it suggests to move uh, this host to the maintenance. Okay, so let's go to the hosts and do exactly that. Uh, by the way, if uh, in this case we already uh, live migrated the VMs 
to the new host. But if uh, we had some VMs running on the old host, of course, during the maintenance, they will be live migrated to the other available hosts. So we move to maintenance, the node one and node two hosts. And now we can attempt again to upgrade the cluster level version. Okay, we go again to the clusters and perform the same step again. So the compatibility version, again, we choose the 4.4. Okay, we receive again the same warning regarding the VMs. And as you can see, this time it actually succeeds. Great. So now we have uh, only one node or host running with the other two being in maintenance and basically non not available to the environment. Now, as you can see, um, the VMs I ran um, the PS command to look at the machine types that VMs previously had on the old hosts. There are uh, seven ones or center seven ones. And now we'll check them again to see if anything changed. Okay, so here we're running on the new host. And as you can see, there are still the machine types if uh, of uh, both VMs is I440FX. So it's the same as we had on uh, overt 4.3. Okay. Great. So as you can see, here is the warning. Which basically, again, reminds us uh, about the need to shut down the VMs in order for them to get the new configuration. Okay, let's start with VM again. Okay, it's powering up. And let's check again if something changed and if this update of the configuration actually affected the machine types of uh, the VM. So we run the same command again. And as you can see, it's still the same machine type. So the VM is still I440FX based machine. Excellent. Let's speed it up a bit.
Okay, so here we see the properties of this VM. Excellent. And here, as you can see, there is a configuration for the emulation. And you can clearly see that it's using the cluster default and with the preference for the i440. So basically, just as we saw, even though we updated to the new version, Still, all the current clusters, the clusters that we migrated from the 4.3 environment, they will continue to run in the previous uh, emulation level. So nothing will happen uh, to the VMs. And uh, the configuration of the VM itself will be um, saved. So we we'll, won't get any surprises. Let's shut it down and look at some of the options that we have. Okay, as uh, you can see, we actually provide a number of options. So we have both the old configuration, the old emulation types, machine types, and the new ones, the Q35 with the VMs, as um, I just said, since these VMs are were migrated, they still use the same machine type as before. Okay. Let's move to the next part. Okay, so the next step is to update the data center level. As you can see, we get the warning sign because we updated the cluster level to 4.4, but the data center still was at the 4.3 level. So we're getting a question, it asks us, if we really want to update and basically here we are we at the 4.4 compatibility version level and as you can see we now with all the clusters being in 4.4 actually if we didn't have a cluster all the cluster uh, in the 4.4 we could not update the data center and now we'll create a new cluster, which is also already created, of course, in the 4.4 compatibility version level. Okay, excellent. Uh, by the way, here we get a message about node one to be moved to the non-operational mode. And before that, it was just in maintenance, but since we moved our data center to the 4.4, it's already uh, can be used. So all the, at this stage, once you move to the uh, 4.4 at the data center level, it basically makes all the old hosts, if you haven't removed them yet, it will make them non-operational. 
Okay, cool. Let's move to the next stage. So this next stage is actually we will going to add a new host to this new cluster which we just uh, added in the previous step. So as you can see the new cluster cluster is currently empty. It has no hosts and we are going to fix it just to present you what happens um, if you actually create a new cluster and add the new host there. So it works just like before. You uh, select the cluster that you want to add a new node into, providing all the details just like in 4.3. Okay, just as before, it warns about the power management and it begins the installation, which we again can speed up. As you can see, it takes uh, quite some time to install host, just as before, because it uh, requires downloading quite a few packages there and a configuration of the host. So we can stop it and move to the next stage. Okay, so here we have the node 4 already installed and operational. And now we'll check the cluster. So as you can see, uh, the cluster uh, machine types in the default cluster, the one that we migrated, is one for 40 FX. And the new one, as you can see, it already uses the new emulation machine type, the Q35. So it means that every VM that will, you will create in this new cluster will have already the new type. Great. Let's move. to the last stage in our demo. Okay, so let's create a new VM that will run in this uh, new cluster. Okay, we're selecting the new cluster two. Okay, nothing fancy, it's a simple configuration, which basically we use a very simple operating system, a simple image, just to have something.
Okay, as you can see, this is the default configuration. Nothing fancy here. Okay, finished creating this new VM. And let's check its properties. Okay, and let's start it. Okay, so it's creating the VM. It's powering up. Excellent. And now, as you can see, in this time, the machine types uh, is actually the Q35, just as we expected for it to be. OK, great. So this completes our demo part. Let's return to the presentation. Okay, so next we'll go over overview of the self-hosted engine upgrade, which uh, similar to the standalone that we covered before. And some steps are the same. So again, you will need to stop the engine. You will need to back up the engine. You then need to move to the global maintenance and reinstall the new host again with the 4.4 and restore the engine backup with, uh, in this case, the restoration step. So the backup step is basically the same, using the same tool. But the restoration step is actually combined with the hosted engine deploy part. OK, so let's go over the common question. So one of the question, questions is uh, if somebody needs to update to the latest 4.3 or any 4.3 is OK. We generally suggest to update to the latest 4.3. This is the best option. But uh, something like 4.3.9 or 4.3.10 should be OK. But if you have like previous 4.3 versions, then it may not work. The next question is, is there a rollback for the upgrade? And the answer is no. You don't have the, up, uh, the rollback, actually, because you basically install it on two different instances of the engine. But you do have a backup. So uh, we suggest to keep the old engine. So once you stop the engine and disable the engine, to make sure that uh, the instant doesn't reboot and uh, the old engine begins to work. To still uh, keep it aside as a uh, backup in case something goes wrong during the upgrade. And the next question is, what happens to the current VMs? And as we saw it during the uh, demo, the current VMs continue to run. So unless something uh, drastic happens and uh, the VM fails, uh, the users will actually not notice anything during the uh, upgrade process. And the last is, but not least is how much downtime we can expect. 
So in this case, again, it's um, similar a bit to the previous question. So VMs generally won't have any downtime. As uh, VMs continue to run, and uh, once you install new hosts, you use live migration. So the only uh, downtime, what's uh, so-called, is uh, the downtime of the engine itself. And it's the period in which you can't actually manage the VMs. And uh, of course, it will depend on your specific environment. What uh, the size of your environment, how much time it takes to actually prepare the backup, and how much time it will then take uh, to restore the backup. Now, uh, in order to make sure that downtime is minimal, as you can saw um, in our demo, I already installed a new instance and install all the packages there. Now, in case of self-hosted engine, it, it can be a bit different. But generally, it should not affect uh, your environment that critically, as the old VMs uh, should continue to run. OK, so thank you very much. And if you have further questions, please feel free to uh, contact us and ask us these questions. We'll be glad to answer this and help you. Thank you very much.